Hello, everyone. Welcome to Heart to Heart Ministries. Bernadette Jones here. We have a special guest with us today. I'm so excited um, that she's been able to take time out of her busy schedule to come and talk to us about her new EP that recently came out earlier this year. She is none other than recording artist and my first lady and spiritual mom, Pastor Mary Murphy. Welcome. Hello. Well, thank you for having me on your show today, Bernadette. Well, it's, it's such a joy having you here. I'm so excited. So I actually want to dive right in. For those um, of our listeners who don't know you, um, just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up actually getting into music and singing. Oh, wow. Well, she we, took me way back. <laughs> <laughs> well, originally I got involved into singing. I, I knew I could sing. I was around eight or nine years old and actually went several years without singing. And then I met my husband, which is your pastor, Doc Murphy. And I started back singing with him. I actually started singing in his choir years ago, over 25 years ago. And that pretty much got me back into singing because the church he went to, his musician actually started letting me lead certain songs and stuff. And so I started back singing there, but then I started recording um, myself because we were in groups before and then I wanted to do some recording on my own. So I actually did some touring years ago, uh, traveling to different states like Florida and all the different cities in Florida. And then we went up to New Hampshire and did some touring there um, about an hour away from Canada. So uh, I've done a lot of touring. I've had a chance to open for several different singers like Mary Alessi. If you don't know her, that's Martha Menezes' sister, twin sister, actually, they're Mary and Martha, like my sister and I are <laughs> Mary and Martha, and Alvin Slaughter, I've opened for him, I've got a chance to meet Clifton Davis from that hit TV show, A Man, mm -hmm. back in the late 80s, early 90s, I guess, it's a long time ago, but I met him, met, um, what's her name, from Destiny's Child, uh, one of the singers in that group, I can't think of her name, uh, I met Sherry Kagi, I've sang in front of them, uh, Russ Lee, who was like the tenor of the year for five years in a row, oh, wow. and uh, Kelly Rowland, that's her name, Kelly Rowland, oh. you sing with Destiny's Child, and I actually got, she heard me sing too, so I've done a lot of touring and a lot of traveling singing, and I love it, it's just, it's my passion, I always say it's my passion, my pursuit, and my purpose, so I love to sing. Oh, awesome. So how did you know, because I know you talk specifically about being specific in your calling, you know, even yes. with whatever it is, make sure you get specifics. How did you know specifically that you were to do this type of, of singing? At, that's a good question. Yes. Um, of course, when I first started singing, I was just singing like in different choirs and stuff. And then um, even with our churches, because my husband and I are church planters and we, we plant different churches. And so especially when you're doing apostolic work, you have to like do everything. And so I know that even though I have to be in the role of like a praise and worship leader, I've always known um, from the very beginning, actually um, Doc Murphy, which I mentioned before, he told me early on where well, you're um, the type of singer that will be touring and traveling. So I've been knowing that and doing that since I was about 21 years old. Uh, knowing that I'm supposed to specifically do tours and travel and sing and stuff. And it also fits my DNA. It, it fits mm -hmm. my type of personality and my type of character, which is what God does. He doesn't change you from who you are. He uses you in what you are. And so what I mean by that is my personality is one of those that I don't like to sit still. I like to be moving. I like to be going. And so it just fits my, my DNA. I'm a traveler. I like to travel and sing. So it's really important to know what you're specifically called to do so that you won't waste your time. Yes, ma'am. And your most recent EP, which is Future Risk It, and I will admit yeah. the first time I read it, I saw Future Stick. <laughs> your brain just kind of <laughs> on you, but it's Future Risk It. Um, yeah. Tell me about how you came up with, with, with that title and that, and that name. Mm, okay, I love that title and I love that name. Actually, Doc Murphy, my husband, he knew that this year, 2021, would be the year that we would go back to the future. And so when he got that from God, he said, well, we're going to make this album to be like a futuristic style. And so the title just popped up in his head, Future Risk It. And so immediately I went into the studio and we both did. And 
I started creating music that would pretty much talk about that theme, going back to the future. In other words, going back to the Bible so that we can move forward. And so I wanted those lyrics and all the songs to be geared towards pretty much talking about heavenly places and not risking our future, not knowing who the way, the truth, and the life is. So that's where that title came from. Yes. And tell us about the cover photo. I feel like there's a story behind that picture. Tell us a little bit about that. The story <laughs> behind the picture. Well, he wanted, he had sent me, when he first told me about the album, he sent me uh, an actual graphic or a picture of this lady. And he said, this is what I want your album to look like. We want it to look like a futuristic robot. Mm -hmm. And so what I had to do is I, I, my niece found somebody, I started sending out text messages and I said, find out for me who can do futuristic makeup on my face to make me look like a futuristic robot. So she found somebody on Instagram and then this particular lady, when I went to her, I showed her that graphic and that picture and she was able to pull it off. She did a fantastic job making me look like a futuristic robot yes, she did. She really did <laughs> for her to take for me to take it all but it took her about two hours to put the makeup on oh, it wow. took about 30 minutes for me to wash it off <laughs> oh, and i know you asked your social media um following what their favorite song is so i've got to ask you what's your favorite song on this ep and why my favorite song it's kind of I'm kind of torn and I was like this even from the beginning um, when I made the I made it is the one of the songs that I love on there it's only four because it's um, just the first season but the four songs that I did the, the first one was called hold up wait a minute and that's the first one that I wrote for this and then the second one was I made it and then the third one was what happened and then the fourth one was future risk it well, I was torn between I Made It and Future Risk It because I really like the sound on I Made It. I love it. I still love mm -hmm. it. It's catchy and it just seems like it fits my personality. I can see me doing it in concert. Mm -hmm. But I think the one with the most meaning and the one that really portrays what this particular EP is about is the last song, which is Future Risk It. Because mm -hmm. the thing I like about this song is the idea behind it. I wanted to make the gospel in song. I literally wanted to minister to people and witness to people in song and literally lay out the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then to kind of trigger their minds into wondering who is the way, the truth, and the life. And I wanted to show them that in song. And I thought also it would be a great way for people that are not really good about ministering to people and being a witness it's an easy way to just say hey listen to this song so that's my favorite song because of the purpose behind it that's awesome and it's, it's like, i can't even pick a favorite i was like all of them <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a huge compliment so i thank you for that <laughs> And also on your social media, you post a lot about how lyrics matter and why what we listen to is so important. Um, and I know a lot of people will be like, oh, well, it's just music. You know, it doesn't matter. It's entertainment. Can you expand a little bit on why what we listen to matters so much? Absolutely. Because I know for myself, and I think a lot of people can relate to this, a lot of the songs that we heard growing up, they become a part of who we are. So people use songs and sometimes they don't intentionally do it, but it does, it indoctrinates you and it will have mm -hmm. you believing those lyrics literally for the rest of your life. One song in particular, and I know uh, my husband jokes about it. He used to joke about it quite a bit, quite often. And he would say that um, the song, I'm climbing up on the rough side of the mountain. <laughs> so I'm doing my best to make it in. So anyway, here we are thinking in life that we're supposed to climb mountains and the scripture doesn't say for us to climb mountains the scripture tells us to speak to mountains and so it indoctrinated us we we thought we had to go through rough mountains and climb things and you know to get the job done when god gave us authority to speak to mountains and they can move so just something as simple as that one line in that song 
indoctrinated us. It gave us a belief system that is really hard to shake once you get older because it's in it's rooted in you. It's it's engrafted into you your thinking pattern. So it's very important that us as me as a songwriter, and I try to relay this message to other songwriters. This is our one shot to tell people the truth. So yeah. we can't tell them like half truth. We have to tell them all the truth because they're only going to listen to that one song. They may listen to one of my songs. And if I'm kind of, it's a confusing message in the song, then the people are going to go away with that message that I portrayed. So that's why I try to put everything according to the word in my songs. And I don't put traditional sayings in my songs. I don't put little quotes that people quote. If it doesn't line up with scriptures, then I don't say it. If I don't elaborate on it, then I remove it from the line. If if it's leaving any kind of confusion in the mindset of people, then I remove it because lyrics do matter. Yeah, that's very true. And then even while we're singing, we're making that confession of what those lyrics are. And you know, the word says life and death is in the power of our tongue. So, you know, that kind of lays the seeds we're planting with our words of what we're singing and what we're saying, and it becomes a meditation. That's true. Exactly right. So, you know, I think it's awesome, you know, because I was randomly, randomly singing your song at work. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Absolutely. You've got some great stuff out there that, you know, people need to, they need to listen to, get a hold of. Like you said, you've got the gospel. It's truly gospel music because you are actually putting the good news of God's word in, in your music and the truth of God's word in your music. Praise God. Yes. Yes. Such a, such a blessing. Um, Thank you. And so when, you know, you said, mentioned that this was season one, when is season two coming? When can we expect to season two? Season two is scheduled to release on April the 1st. So what I'm doing is every quarter I am mm-hmm. releasing a new season. And so episode two, I mean, season two should be released on April the 1st. And then the, mm-hmm. uh, Season three will be released July the 1st, and then season four will be released and scheduled to release on October the 1st. So that's our timeline, and Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to all the seasons. I'm uh, trying to come up with each season to be a specific theme that Mm -hmm. people can listen to, because on season one, like I mentioned, I talked about heavenly places quite a bit, and I gave a lot of my testimonials and story of my life kind of took people way back to when I was a child and then bringing them up to now to show them what the benefits are to serving God. So that's mm-hmm. what that story was all about. Yes. Well, I'm excited, <laughs> of course. Um, and where can people either stream or download um, your, your EPs? They can stream or download on any digital platform. So it's a lot of them out there. Uh, I know we name a few like Spotify and DZ and you know, Amazon, iTunes, all those di- digital platforms that you can listen to and download. And then, of course, they have it on YouTube as well. You can listen to it on YouTube. Um, so it's out there. If anyone wants to hear it, it's a very easy access to get to it now that things have gone digitally. So well, that's awesome. So I know I follow you on YouTube and Facebook and Spotify as well. Very much so- music. Yes, ma'am. And um, for those of you who don't know, the new EP is actually M A R I E E Murphy. So right. it's not M A R Y. <laughs> you won't find it that way. You'll find some other music. But for this one, it's M A R I E E Murphy. So, well, thank you so much for taking um, time out to come and talk to us about your EP and just what you've been doing, what you have coming up. I know I'm excited. So, you're welcome. Thank you for having me on your show, Ministries Ministries to Heart. I appreciate it, and I'm excited about it. Looking forward to seeing it air. Yeah, absolutely. So enjoy the rest of your day. Um, don't go anywhere yeah. yet. <laughs> I, have say, I have to say the name right because I know the name, and I said Ministries to Heart. It's Heart to Heart ministry so I wanted to make sure I said that correctly (laughs) 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 well thank you again Um, 
So, and we will be looking for your next EP on April 1st. Awesome. Thank you so much. There was a man sent all the way from glory. He lived his life and left behind his story. They prophesied that he would be the savior of all mankind or those who would receive him.